This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Hiroja Shai. Hello, this is Hiroja Shai with your moderator. And here I am discussing on this episode of F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. My um, kind of uh, reviews of seven movies that I found... Um, that have definitely influenced the storytelling and the visuals of Mr. Robot. Now, some of these are very explicit. Uh, There's actually an eighth movie that I already did a review for, which is Pulp Fiction. But these seven movies, um, some have been mentioned in-universe or go directly in-universe. Others are just, um, clearly they have either a visual element or some sort of... uh, back of the head influence of Sam Ismail, the creator, or in the writers in the in the writing room of this show that kind of shape the story. And well Mr. Robot borrows heavily from these different films for story tech- telling and direct goes to films for the visuals. Um, basically these reviews kinda of help us understand what it is we're seeing in Mr. Robot. Uh, they help shape the world that our main protagonist, you know, Elliot Alderson, um, lives in. Um, more importantly, the creator, Sam Esmail, and the other writers uh, of the show do, by using these elements from these uh, different movies that I will mention, there's a part of a misdirection to hide story arcs, uh, part reshaping the, the actual story channel and storytelling in general. Uh, with many of these acts are either being subverted or the genres that they, and, and elements that they come from from the storytelling um, are being subverted to kind of propel the story forward. And fundamentally, they're asking deep questions of the audience, like, should we even be cheering for our heroes? Um, or are our heroes even heroes? I mean, should we be rooting for F Society? Should we be rooting for Elliot or even Mr. Robot, his persona? Uh, should we be glad that, um, you know, Darlene's alive or that Dom is into the fold or Dom tried to get um, Elliot and Tyrell and all of them? I mean, there's certain, these certain genres or ele- um, elements from these different films um, help us, you know, make these questions. And one of the reasons why I think... Uh, Sam Ismail has used these films as a template um, and has shaped and um, hinted at the different types of potential story arcs or subverting the story arcs or even hiding the story arcs is because we live in such a very pop cultural reference world. I mean, Elliot himself talks about this in season one, how he thought he was freed of himself of F Society and that he was going to go watch Marvel movies and go to Starbucks. and be like a normal person, everyday average person. And because we kind of live in this very, uh, I want to say shallow world or commercialized world, uh, there, there's all these elements. It's just part of the culture to have these like pop cultural references. Um, they're so inundated throughout um, our media and our lives that it, it gets, I want to say difficult, but you have to really bring it in order to be able to tell in essence, the same story over and over again, which is a Joseph Campbell's um, hero's journey. To be able to tell these familiar tropes and um, and ideas, like the, uh, I guess, the whodunit, if you will, for season two with um, Dom trying to figure out whodunit, who is responsible for the uh, 5-9 hack. How, you know, F Society is the ragtag group of freedom fighters taking down the big bad um how um what else is a genre pinned here the cult the idea of a master manipulator cult leader that is shaping the reality in the world that um protagonist is in and which comes from horror if you will in some cases or corporate intrigue if you look at the, the Phil Price and the, the Tyra, Tyra Wellick uh, storyline, even to some extent Angela, uh, reshaping all that to uh, make the audience not only um, 
be engaged and interested uh, using familiar visual cues and tropes or like all you think this is where the story is going and then deflect or mr. direct like a magician to tell you that a deeper meaning story and take the story into completely different directions that the audience would not have anticipated so of the seven movies that I'm going to be talking about I will be talking about the Matrix, uh, Back to the Future Part Two, Fight Club, uh, The Maltese Falcon, uh, Shallow Grave, The Quiet Earth, and The Hit You. Now, the the last three, um, the last three, it might be a stretch about their influences, but Shallow Grave is an inverse in universe mentioned film. It is uh, the film that uh, Mr. Edward Alderson was going to take Elliot on the day. Supposedly he died. We're not really sure if that's the day he died, but he collapsed in the movie theater. And uh, we saw Elliot pick up his father's jacket and just walk away from him as he lay there collapsing, uh, either dying or going into some kind of heart attack, if you will. And going to watch the movie that he really wanted to watch, which, was, which wasn't Shallow Grave, I believe. And um, talking to his imaginary friend, Mr. Robot. Uh, so we saw, the, I guess you could say, the hint, of, at least, of the manifestation of this split personality within Elliot in this moment. Uh, the Maltese Falcon has to do with the Washington Township plant theory that I have about it being the ultimate MacGuffin. The Maltese Falcon is one of those, um, like Pulp Fiction, one of those um, MacGuffin films. Um, when I, t when I do the review, I'll talk about it because there's also some kind of film noir stuff in there that um, many of the characters in Mr. Robot share are pulled from the film noir genre, particularly uh, White Rose as the film uh, Finn Montel, uh, the FBI agent Dom as the gumshoe detective uh, trying to crack the case. Uh, even, um, God, what's his name? The mobster fixer type of a guy, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, he he has some share some elements from the film noir uh, about the kind of like smart, uh, well put together mob figure, but he's just a bad dude in general. Uh, what else? Okay, so so those are the films that I'm gonna kind of be reviewing and stuff. And. Kind of, kind of give you a kind of a sketch. You know, one of the biggest borrowing of films, if you will, is Fight Club. You know, the imaginary friend, other personality that Elliot's been talking to, the character Mr. Robot, uh, which has the um, image of his father and displays the personality traits that Elliot, which he possesses, or she, um, also seen is also seen by him, but not by any of the other characters because they're actually seeing Elliot as something that you know. Season one, everyone kind of kind of saw that, saw it for what it was, is you know, Fight Club, Fight Club, Fight Club. Everyone kind of figured it out. But then you see the subversion, the subvert, when you realize that the, the imaginary figure is not some hyper-realized version of Elliot. It's actually his father, which no one really saw coming. It was like a twist. A few people might have saw the hints. But for the most part, people were shocked to realize that Mr. Robot, Mr. Robot, the image of him is Elliot's father, Edward Alderson. Uh, the main point of taking down the one percent, the one percent in the show shares the same plot elements of um, Fight Club, blowing up the buildings to make everyone's credit go to zero. Uh, there's other similarities that I will get into fight in the Fight Club review, but primarily, like I said, Sam Ismail and the main writers or creators. While they borrow these elements, it's not like a direct ripoff. Uh, this is only a surface comparison, but it, like I said, it's a deep, meaningful dialogue with the subject matter. Even refuting many of the help beliefs people have about a particular viewpoint of the film or completely subverting the entire genre of filmmaking. Um, for example, the whole concept of the ragtag group of freedom fighters taking down the big bad. Um, well, we'll get back to that into the moment. But when Sam Asimov does is, you know, the, the, the creators and the writers in the writer room, it takes the current myths of our generation of films. 
these films, you know, these templates, the Matrix, uh, the kind of hacker feel, the dystopian world viewpoint that is so pervasive and pre prevalent throughout filmmaking, you can say the Matrix kind of really launched that, um, that genre that um, has taken root and hold uh, right now in filmmaking, from everything from like The Hunger Games to Divergent to some even the zombie films or The Walking Dead. Uh, you can see the dystopian um, viewpoints in various different television series and shows that wasn't um, a very pervasive uh, genre until really, uh, you can say, the success of Matrix. Um, and Mr. Robot does share a lot of those dystopian elements, and we'll talk about that. Even the ragtag freedom group taking down the big bad. Um, our perception of understanding what, what is real and what is not real, which is what the Matrix is all about. Um, and we'll talk about that further as we talk about what those elements that Sam Ismail has taken that is familiar and uh, helped us guide us thinking like this one thing or this kind of familiarity so we can talk about try to teach us or reach us at a deeper level of understanding when he when um, he's talking about the Mr. Robot universe because fundamentally what the Mr. Robot universe is 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 a show that is grounded in reality in in the real world and he's using these fantasy elements to realize that all these concepts all these ideas of like the ragtag group that's going to prevail in the end it's just fantasy it doesn't work in the real world and this is the reality of what happens when you take these type of actions. Um, something else that Simon Smell does um, with the current myths of you know the filmmaking is he takes some of these genre elements and it's like an underlying template for uh, the different seasons. Uh, for example, season one was like the heist, the F Society um, having the five nine hack. Uh, it very much has many of the elements of a heist film. Uh, season two, you start seeing the dystopian world viewpoint. You also had elements of a crime drama with um, Tyra Wellick being missing, with um, Angela being with E Corp, uh, Dom trying to find out who uh, is part of F Society, and eventually getting uh, Darlene, if you will. Uh, Season three, you start seeing uh, elements of horror, the full reality of what has happened with the 5 9 hack. Uh, you slowly saw the decay in season two, but season three is full blown with garbage all over the place, people using e coin, um, prostituting themselves in the street, selling goods and services all over the place. You see for sale signs and closed business signs and boarded up, and people just going to soup kitchens, long lines. Um, at the same time, you saw uh, people fit, playing fiddle on the roof, uh, great opulence and wealth still being had, but not everyone has the same means of obtaining it. They're still having a good time, so you see a really contrasting viewpoint, which is part of the dystopian world where there's one group of people that are extremely well off, the, the, the oligarch, if you will, and the rest of the people. And there's also a bit of a sci-fi fantasy element adventure going on there with the very opening sequence with the Washington Township plant, whatever that device is. Uh, some of those elements have always been part of the Mr. Robot universe, but the, right now with season three, there was more of it occurring. And again, all these story storytelling methods carry an element, if not all, of the Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. But that goes without saying. But taking these, you know, iconographics of these films that have been so ingrained in our culture. For example, the Tyler Durgan figure, um, the Matrix concept of uh, Neo getting up after being shot and getting up and going after the agents. You can kind of see that with Elliot uh, getting up after being shot by Tyrell and becoming Mr. Robot, if you will, so that he can uh, be the hero, if you will. Um, other things are just little fun little hints, like for example, Darlene um, dressing up in a similar fashion as the girl from the with a dragon tattoo when she um, helps Angela 
I get the the Finta cell into the FBI portion of the uh, FBI building. And again, one of the primary reasons that the, the writers in CMSML utilize a lot of these uh, the, these films, like The Matrix, The Back to the Future Part 2, which we'll get really in-depth when we do the review for that and its influences, Fight Club, uh, The Maltese Falcon, uh, Pulp Fiction, is we've digested a lot of this pulp culture uh, films for years. Um, a lot of this has been spit bit back to us, uh, reshaped to create a story that's very reflective of our times. You know, we've from Indiana Jones and Adventure Cape to Han Solo or any of the Star Wars films, Star Trek, you know, Predators, Aliens, rom-coms. We've seen all these films over and over again. These same stories told it as in different ways. And again, what the writers are doing is they're, they're kind of reshaping it and grounding it into reality um, and, ex and expressing to us that fairy tales don't work in this world. They don't work in the real world. They don't work in the Mr. Robot universe. We saw that very explicitly broken down to us by Philip Price himself uh, when he enters the, the room, of, not the room, but the house of Tyra Willock uh, where Elliot slash Mr. Robot is there and breaks it down that the revolution they were part of was allowed to happen because the power structure Philip Price allowed it. But more importantly because what exactly did they think they were doing? What exactly, what type of revolution was, you know, Elliot leading? I mean, where are his followers? And Philip Price broke it down to them, like, you know, readers set the agenda. What agenda was being set? And it really just kind of shows how juvenile the concept of, you know, blowing up a bunch of buildings or encrypting servers uh, don't really change anything. It's, it's very fantastical, it's very fantasy, it's very childish to think that somehow that's going to rock the universe and reshape the world. Which is why I'm doing the review of the Fallen 7 films, to discuss their influences on Mr. Robot, uh, what these familiar story elements are, are woven into the framework of the Mr. Robot inverted and, Mr. Robot narrative and subverted to tell us this new tale. Uh, again, it's The Matrix, uh, Back to the Future Part 2, uh, Fight Club, The Maltese Falcon, uh, Shallow Grave, The Quiet Earth, and The Hitcher. Uh, fundamentally, I do believe what the overall story theme of Mr. Robot is all about is a story of a ragtag group of freedom fighters taking down the big bat. But what I think uh, what is being asked of us is if you are cheering for the hero, which you are, what exactly are you really cheering about? Why are we cheering? And are we truly prepared to follow these heroes to the end conclusion? So thank you very much uh, for listening. I hope you look forward um, to these reviews. Uh, first up is going to be the Back to the Future Part 2. And that's going to be followed by The Hitcher, and then followed by The Matrix, and then um, Fight Club. Thank you for listening. Um, this is your moderator, Hiroja Scheib, logging out. This has been a Hiroja Scheib Space Odyssey Network production.